it went over. Did my best to place it right. First big winds of the autumn. The wind got to it. Good morning and welcome to Paul T's World. And on this windy morning, and it might rain shortly, I want to show you around the back garden in early October. It's still warm, we have southerly winds. It's gorgeous, but it's a little bit windy. Now I've just left the Brugmansia here for the moment. It's going to have another flush of flowers. It's not really in the sun, but I'm afraid it's going to blow over again. This Charles Grimaldi Brugmansia has been absolutely gorgeous this summer, the whole summer. I bought it as a rooted cutting from Facebook Marketplace in March. And it's grown to this, it's been magnificent. And as I've mentioned in another video, the reason I wanted a Charles Grimaldi is because it scents better than just about any other Brugmansia. In the evening, the scent on the patio is magnificent. And here we have the flowers, the trumpets are going to come out shortly, some of them. It seems to come in waves of flowers, of trumpets. And what I like about this is I've eventually and actually made it into a tree form. So I've cut all the branches and leaves off down below and it's left this lovely canopy, which actually means, of course, that it is very susceptible to the wind. Now this pot looked massive when I put it in and now it looks so small. Now the reason I left this branch here is because it made it easier to get hold of and put it in the pot and indeed it'll make it easier to put it in the garage next month. And the other reason I left this is just look at the future cuttings I'll be taking from this and it has just got its V shape. Brugmansia's flower after the V. But I will be cutting all these down to nine inch lengths to make cuttings for next year. And each of those cuttings, I will be confident, will look like this next year in the height of the summer. So that has been a big success story. So let's see what else we've got in the garden. It's the first week of October and my Bill McKenzie Clematis is flowering beautifully. Look at that. The seed heads look very nice as well. Let's have a look at some of the seed heads. Here we are. Cute little things, little bobbly things. And there we are. I've grown it up the side of the house. This clematis is a pruning group three and you simply cut most of it back in the late spring. And this is where I cut this back. You can see here, there's the cut that I made last year. And here are, for example, from this one here, we've got four have grown. So I literally just cut it straight across there, pull all this off in the late spring. Then it grows through the summer and produces the flower later on in the summer and early autumn. Fabulous. Sky's looking ominous. It's going to rain shortly. Lace cap hydrangea. And let's just turn around and see what we've got in the dahlia border. Well, in the dahlia border, I actually planted some cannas. These cannas have done well. This is Canna Wyoming.
It's only my second year with canners. Last year I had this Wyoming in a pot. I overwintered it in the garage and decided to put it in the ground for this year. Because I'm in zone 9A, I'm going to risk leaving these canners in the ground and I'll be pretty confident that they'll be up again next year. So they've done well, lots of new shoots everywhere. Now what I'll probably do is in the spring, after the winter, I will probably dig those up, split them and then put some back in and give others away. The dahlia border is still flowering. I've had dahlias for a few years now. I leave these in the ground. I don't lift any dahlias, mainly because if I lift them, they will probably die. But when I leave them in the ground, they all survive, usually. But we have had mild winters this last 10 years. But the most important thing with dahlias, not that I'm an expert, but it seems to me that dahlias don't like to be cold and wet just like most plants. So if you have free draining soil, as I do, it's based on sand. Of course, I put lots of compost on over the years, but compost drains quite well as well, particularly when there's sand underneath, so it doesn't get soggy and waterlogged here over the winter. So the dahlias do fine. Now the other thing I've discovered with dahlias is some dahlias keep going right through to the first frosts, as they should, but some of them don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on the dahlias that flower right through the summer, right up to the first frosts, and I'm going to show you those right now. And as you can see, the white ones here, they're strong and they keep flowering right through to November. The other thing I've noticed with these white ones is they have very strong stalks and also the flowers keep going for quite a long time, each individual flower. Here's one that's over that I should deadhead because I'm continuing to deadhead the flowers. But these white ones last and last and last, as do the yellow ones. These yellow ones also last for quite a few weeks, it seems to me, each bloom. Whereas some of the others, such as this one, they don't last that long. And the other thing that I find with some dahlias is the first flush is fantastic, but after that it's rather sparse the number of flowers. So let's move over to the other side of the garden where I have some other dahlias, my favourites. And here they are, Bishop of Landaff, first time that I've had these. Oh look at this, needs deadheading. What happens with these flowers is they do go over very quickly. However, there are dozens and dozens of flowers, but it does have a very rapid and very nice succession of flowers. So I really like this Bishop of Landa. And I mentioned in a previous video, dahlias are easy. And I think I'm now going to explain why I said that. And that is because this Bishop of Landa I simply bought for £3.99 a bag of the tubers at a local garden centre and that was in March. The garden centres do sell them a little bit early so don't be too anxious to plant them. Just leave them in a cool shed or utility room until the last frosts and then just simply plant them up. And that's what I did in March, April this year and I've had a magnificent display right the way through the summer. Easy for £3.99. Even if you left them in the ground and they died, it's been only £3.99 for a complete summer of beautiful flowers. So you can actually experiment with your garden in your climate 
as to whether you can leave them in the ground. Because I don't like lifting them, I just feel that's a faff. And I'm not into faffing. And the other similar dahlia that I really like is Moonfire. I featured this a lot over the years because the bees like it. And once again, it gives a good show right the way through to November. The flowers don't last long, but it keeps producing flowers all the time. The last flush is nearly as good as the first flush was in early summer. Fabulous. Now, as we are at the tropical border, let's go through the tropical border and see how the plants have done and what I'm going to do with them this winter. The irisene has done really nicely. I cut it back a lot to take cuttings. So I've got cuttings in the house. I don't know whether this is going to be hardy over my winter. I feel not, but I do have some cuttings. Here we've got a little canna, a dwarf canna, called uh, Happy Carmen. Good idea to deadhead cannas, as I should with this, to see if you can get more flower spikes. And here indeed is the second or third flower spike from this particular canna. The little cordeline, Pink Passion. It's first year, I bought it in spring. As with this fan palm. It's getting a little bit overshadowed, but I don't mind too much because the dahlias will be cut right back after the frosts and so the palm tree can stand proud right the way through the winter. Oh, there's a bee on the moon fire. And another one here. The bees do like these open dahlias. I've got a Durban canna here. Seems to me that it's a medium-sized canna, this one. It's been flowering well through the season. Then we have the red banana. Now, that wind I was talking about, it has just damaged it a little bit, but it's doing well. And once again, this was bought in the spring as a plug plant. I bought three for 20 pounds. It's coming up with a new leaf here. So dahlias I'm leaving in. They'll be absolutely fine in my garden in winter. It's zone 9A. The Abyssinian red banana, that won't be fine. I think it doesn't really like temperatures much below about five degrees centigrade. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this. I might dig it up, split it into quarters, put it in the porch and see if I can create some new ones for next year. Totally new to me this, overwintering the banana. But again, it was only three for 20 pounds. So whatever happens with it, I could just buy another plug plant next spring. So I'm not going to stress about how to overwinter a red banana. I'm not into stress. Now this Brugmansia, I don't know what variety it is. Trumpets start off white-ish and go to pink. This Brugmansia is going to be left in the ground. It's an experiment. I'm going to see whether this Brugmansia can survive this winter. Whereas the Charles Grimaldi, I'm not going to risk it outside this winter. I'll show you in a subsequent video exactly what I do with the Charles Grimaldi Brugmansia in winter. And here we have the Eric Neubert canna. He's a big boy, this one. Let's see if we can reach up and up and up and up into the flowers. There we are. So <laughs> he's nine or ten feet high. Whoa. Fabulous. Once again, I bought this 
on Facebook Marketplace for about five or six pounds as a very small rhizome. Just one little rhizome with one little shoot and it has grown like this this summer. And in fact, there might have been more shoots, but two cats had a fight in this canner about a month ago and snapped a couple of the shoots, but there's plenty left. And underneath all this, I planted a Persicaria. I'm new to Persicaria. This is the first year I've had Persicaria. Here it is growing everywhere. So I bought this for about six pounds from a guy in Norfolk and it spread everywhere. So these gorgeous shaped leaves give this tropical feel. So that's been a success. So that is Persicaria Purple Fantasy. Cleopatra. Canna Cleopatra. It's fl the flowers are really interesting. Not that they're out at the moment, but here we have another flower spike. So this hopefully will have time to come out and flower beautifully. This is a Euphorbia, Mellifera. Now I was actually given this by a neighbor. It's growing really nicely. I've just planted in the ground some Aeonium Schwarzkopf. I do have some other Aeoniums, so I might leave those in the ground. I have overwintered one before in a pot in the garden. The Euphorbia will be absolutely fine. I will leave the Cleopatra in the ground and see what happens over winter. The hardy banana. Musa Baju. So I bought this, I think, for £15 in a garden centre. It was a foot high, probably in May. Growing beautifully. Now, the leaves were pristine up to about two weeks ago. And now, of course, with these winds, it started to shred them a little bit. But it's not too bad. It's coming up with another leaf. And also, it's got pops. Don't we just love it when plants reproduce? There we are. So it's got some pops there. Very hardy, these bananas. So I'm not going to do anything with this banana over winter. Now, I know a lot of people actually protect their hardy bananas, the Musa Baju. They will put straw around them. And the reason for that is the stem of these bananas really are just compressed leaves, the stems of the leaves. It's not woody. So there is a good chance if I leave this out and don't protect it, and there's a fair bit of frost, which is unlikely, but you never know, I will probably lose the height of this banana. It might well die back to the ground, but the roots will be fine and it will grow probably larger than this next year, even if it dies back to the ground, because of course it's got a nice root system. I prefer to do the minimum work in the garden, not the maximum. So I'm not going to wrap, I'm not going to protect this banana. Let's see what it does with no protection and we'll see what it looks like in the spring. And behind the banana, we have elephant ears. Pink China, Colocasia. First time I've had this plant. And in fact, I've got two. So let's just move around to the, oh, here we are. Look at the size of these leaves. So I've got two Pink China and they have sent up little pops. Let's see if I can go around the other side. Go around the Cleopatra and let's see the pops and what's going on. There we are got pops here. Here's obviously the main one. We've got one pop here, 
one here, another one here, another one, oh, and yeah, and another one back there. So I'm really pleased with that. And I wanted the leaves to overhang the pond. And it's worked perfectly. Pink China, Colocasia, Hardy. I'm leaving those in the ground, just as they are. They'll die back to the ground and they'll come up again next spring. So I've been told. My first year with all these. So I'm learning what happens in my garden with my climate. I do have a second type of Colocasia, this one here, Escalenta. It's not quite so hardy and it's not grown quite so well. So I won't really bother with that one too much in the future. I'm going to leave it in the ground and if it dies, it dies. Oh, here's a little cutting I did of the purple fantasy. They take so easily. There's another one back there. So for next year, I want to cover all this ground here. Tetrapanax. It's doing well. So that one is in the ground. It's hardy and I shall just leave that as it is and it'll do what it does. The oak leaf hydrangea really perked up when it started raining. It has flowered this, this year with two very large flowers. It wasn't very happy in the drought, but once the drought had finished, it's uh, immediately sent up these leaves. And of course, we want to see what happens in autumn with these leaves. It's still warmish in Britain at the moment. We're having southerly winds, maybe 16 degrees centigrade. So it's still quite warm. Just backing up now round a Wygela. This is the big white Wygela. And here is the second Persicaria I've got. And this is Red Dragon. Not quite as cute as the Purple Fantasy. This is a cutting and here's a cutting that I did a month or two ago. But it's filling in this area really nicely. I did a lot of cuttings this summer uh, of uh, hydrangeas and clematises. And here's a clematis cutting I did last year and I've just planted it. And here it is. This is a Montana and I want this Montana. Oh, it's already heading up there. I want it to grow up this hawthorn. This hawthorn planted itself here. It's wild hawthorn. I like it. So all in all, the tropical bed has been a real success and everything here has started from scratch this spring. Fabulous. And the last canna of my six or so varieties of canna is the Musifolia. And this is the biggest canna. This canna is called the banana leaf canna for obvious reasons. I didn't expect it to flower, but it has flowered. I've got it in the same pot as I have the ones in the front the Pretoria and the Stuttgart. Again, I bought this from one small rhizome this spring for, I think, 10 pounds. So very pleased with that. And the reason I wanted to put it there was just disguise the shed a little bit. So this canna, because it's in a pot, this is going in my garage over winter. But I'm not going to put anything in the garage or overwinter anything until after the first frost. 
that first frost for the canners tells the canner it's winter, time to shut down. Now canners aren't used to winter, they actually grow all year round. But in Britain, we have to tell them to shut down. And the way to do that is let them experience the first light frost. Not hard frost, but maybe a light frost. And the same with the dahlias. If you lift your dahlias, it's better to wait until actually at the first frost and not before, so that the tubers, the rhizomes, shut down for the winter. The mountain ash has got all its berries. Leaves are just thinking of turning for autumn. And the first birds have started to eat the berries. I hope you've enjoyed a little look round my back garden in early October. And I'll see you next time in Paul T's world. Bye.